Thank you so much for spending time with Zach and I. Uh, please check out the show notes for ways to get in touch with Zach and see where he's going to be. He'll probably be in your state very soon. Also, ways that you can support the show. Obeisance and love. We'll see you next time. All right, welcome back to our show. Uh, today, I have a return guest on, Mr. Zach Rader. Uh, Zach has uh, been on a, about a year and a half ago, and uh, we talked about intuition. And uh, today, we're going to talk, uh, expand a little bit more on meditation, breath work, and how these things can work individually, how they can work combined together, and then also, you know, some ways that we can possibly hide in these uh, these opportunities that may seem like they're helping us, you know. Um, Zach is a uh, international teacher, speaker, and healer. Um, so he actually just passed through the Seattle area a couple weeks ago, did uh, about six events down in this area, was out in Spokane as well. Um, travels around the country, just spreading his gifts and his word and just helping people in the most beautiful way. So Zach, I'm really excited to have you back on. Uh, uh, Zach and I were, uh, were, were trying to meet in person the last time he was in Seattle and just schedules didn't work out right. And, you know, comedy of errors happened. And so one of these days I'm going to make it to an event to yours. I'm going to see you in person. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to give you a handshake and just like embrace you as a human being. But until then, Zoom will have to do for us. Yeah, we are absolutely going to meet in person soon. Yeah. Um, And yeah, I'm super, super excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, thank you, man. I've always loved having you on here. You know, I just I love the work that you're doing. Again, I'm, I'm really upset with myself for not being able to make it to an event you had. Uh, in our area. But uh, before we really get into, you know, the, the work that, um, that we're going to talk about, uh, why don't we talk about like, just real quick, the, the current like string of events that you're doing, right? So I know that you're on a break right now, which is beautiful, because I know how hard you work, and I know how much we need our downtimes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, so the current kind of string of workshops you're doing is, uh, or at least in the Seattle area that you were just at was conscious breathing for healing and awakening. Yeah. And, uh, and so how did, uh, so how did this modality or how did this package kind of come to you into a place? Cause I know you've been touring around the country for many years now. And I imagine that, you know, the modality kind of shifts as you get, you know, more information in and you work with more people. And so how did this kind of, uh, version of your, your work and your workshops kind of come about? Oh yeah. Um, so, so I personally found different breathwork practices like 25 years ago and just have been exploring everyone that I've ever come across ever since. And so that was a definitely a personal practice of mine for, for a long time. And then about 10 years ago, you know, I was laying on the floor in a breathwork and just got the whole download that this is, that this is what's next. This is what I'm bringing into to my work. I was already uh, traveling the world, like doing healing work, but uh, I was, I was, it was to bring this in. And, you know, one of the things that I love so much about breath work is we, I do a breath work event and people, you know, have all kinds of incredible experiences. And uh, it's like, nobody's giving me credit for it anymore. As whereas when I was doing like group healing events or whatever, people, you know, people telling me things like I healed them or something like that. Hmm. And, uh, and I just didn't, I never liked it. And I, I was like, I, I don't like that. And so one of the things I love about breathwork so much is uh, it's you and your own breath. And so there, there's nobody else to give our power away to. It's like, this is, this is you, this is your connection. And so, um, yeah, I've been sharing this all over the place for the last 10 years. Uh, you know, I do uh, some, when we go, I do a lot of several retreats a year and, and that's where we get to go really deep. You know, we get to, to put, multiple days together where we're going deep in breath and then whatever else comes up in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I think the, if we look at the evolution of, of the work, I think the, the biggest evolution is actually happening in the people is, is the, just the consciousness and like, like what is available for, for, uh, each person and, and the collective so much more. It's like, it, it's like everything is up and we can heal, uh, you know, in, in such a, such maybe a quicker way, people are going deeper, faster. It's like more available for more people. And so, uh, that's what I've been noticing. I'm, I'm wondering, I'm curious if you've, if you've noticed that in your sound work, if it's just like people are just so much more available to, to fly. I, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. Cause I, I do, I do feel like that's, that's an ability now. And I think <clears throat> I was talking to somebody about that the other day. And I think, you know, there's that idea of conscious, uh, the collective consciousness, 
right? And the more that the collective consciousness consciousness believes something's available or true, the more ability that it is to be, right? And you can take that idea with magic, right? Magic and sorcery and and the mystical like unicorns and all this stuff that that are fables, right? But I think there's like there's also a modicum of truth to that because when that was a belief there was a lot of people that believed that believed that was an opportunity of things to happen, right? Whether it was magic, spells, you know, uh, herbology, what all this stuff, right? And now that, you know, I think that the expansion of information has really helped us out a lot, being able to, you know, now look at places in the world that we could even just maybe read about back in the day. We can talk to people in those areas. We can talk to like healers or modality uh, holders in those areas. And I think now that the, Like there's scientific backing to a lot of this stuff that we've just felt for so long. Some people need that scientific backing, which I get, and that's fine, right? Get your proof that you need it. But now that that's there, I believe more people are saying, you know what? I think this might be a thing. Maybe I can breathe. Maybe I can meditate. Maybe I can move my body. You know what? Taking a walk in nature actually is really good for you. It can help depression and anxiety. Let's give that a shot. So I think to your point, I think the, the that collective consciousness is opening up to the idea that it's not just a pill. It's not just a, you know, a surgery. It's work that we can do on ourselves, right? Now, if my guts are hanging out, please take me to a surgeon, right? But mm-hmm. if I'm feeling like shit, maybe I'm going to try some of these different modalities now that are, you know, once considered esoteric but now we're coming back to more being like a norm. Mm-hmm. But also to, to your point that you made earlier too, and I've seen this shift, is the understanding that we are our own healers, right? And it's not like, like you said, Zach waved a magic wand and helped me breathe and now I feel healthy and healed and all this shit and it's all thanks to Zach. Okay, cool. Like definitely Zach held some space. I held some space. Whoever it is, whoever your healer, the person that's helping you holds that space, gives you some practices, maybe holds you accountable, but that's your boulder to push. That's your, that's your hole to fill in, right? That's your trench to dig. All those things are your work to do. You'll get help definitely, but it's the person doing it. And I think that needs to make sure that we, we really drive that home one for the person to really feel empowered, but two, being in a healing modality and being the person that holds space for somebody, that little modicum of power that is a bit, that is available for you to, to, to drink up is really potent and it's really powerful and it's there. So the, the, the less that we as the space holders embrace that, yes, I did the thing. No, no, no. This is you, right? Don't aggrandize me. Take me off a pedestal because you're the one that's doing all the work. I'm just sharing space with you. And I think that message needs to be really, really clear to people. Yeah, for sure. Well, and if if we look at healing or we look at uh, awakening or or finding a deeper truth or connection in ourselves, it wasn't, it was never anything that was added to somebody. And so it was like, we're we're just uncovering what's here the entire time. And, And so Again, no, no, nobody gave me anything. Nobody gave you anything. It's like, but, but again, maybe I held up a mirror for you, <laughs> and you got, and and you got to be like, oh my god, I just found everything I was ever looking for, and it was here the entire time. And so, you know, just the idea of healing that that, that we're missing something or we're deficient or we're separate. It's like that's actually the, the illusion that we're healing from. Right. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the, th- the therapist. I think her name was Nicola Perra. It was a book I read a while back. I, I, if it's Nicola Perra, it was a book called how to, uh, how to do the work. Yeah. And, and she's great. And she talks about if, again, if this is her that I'm speaking of, she talks about how there's, you know, we're born with the perfect amount of light. We're born, born with the perfect amount of happiness. But as we get indoctrinated in the culture that we're in, maybe let's, let's speak of the West, you know, we're a materialistic culture. We feel like we need to add things on to, to increase our happiness right? Houses, boats, cars, you know, people, places, trips, all this shit. And, but we're, we're really just dimming that light by adding more things to it. So when you get to that point, you start to remove all the things that you thought were the, you know, the qualifiers for your happiness and you remove this shit. And as you do, you realize this light gets brighter because it's been there the whole time. You've just dimmed it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's just that idea that we are perfect. We're born perfect with the traumas, with the difficulties, with the love, with the guidance, all the things are perfect. It's finding our ways to integrate what we feel is imperfect into that perfectness because that's exactly the way we need to be. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I know I always try to 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 bring some sort of awareness to this and someone's healing journey, but it's like 
for for everyone there, there's nothing wrong with you right right like that's that's not why we're doing any of this there's nothing wrong with you but but here's some tools to explore here's here's some ways to find more of myself here's yeah here's here here's an opportunity to to really get to go deeper within myself and yeah. so um you know that that's what the healing journey is about to me Definitely. And I think, you know, just to, to, just to highlight the importance of having somebody to help you and you don't always need help. Right. But again, like you have a person like Zach, you have a person like myself or, you know, the person that's in your life that can help you again, like you're the healer. Right. But sometimes it's nice to have somebody there to help you dissect what you're experiencing. Right. Cause sure. in, my, in my personal meditation, when I first started meditating, I was on my own. I had an ancillary guide, um, a yoga teacher that kind of introduced the idea to me. He kept planting these little seeds after our yoga classes, like perfect time. You know, you're cracked open. You just sweat it all out. You laid in Shavasana for 10 minutes. You finally like cried maybe for once, you know, and then you go sit in the lobby and this beautiful human would just be like, Hey man, you ever think about meditation? I'm like, oh, you know, never couldn't find the time and all the, you know, all the excuses. And he's, you know, you know, breaks down my excuse barriers. You know, you don't need an hour, take five minutes, all this crap. But the reason I say it's important to have somebody to help dissect is that when I first started meditating, um, you spoke of a mirror, uh, just a moment ago, Zach. And when I was meditating, I didn't realize, but there was this mirror that kept sliding down in front of my face that really showed me all the, the things that I didn't like about myself. And that really scared me because I didn't realize how poorly I thought of myself. And, and I, at, at first I just, I felt victim to those stories and I just believed them. I'm like, Oh shit, I am a, I'm a crappy dad. You know, I'm a shitty person. I have abandoned my kids and blah, blah, blah. You know, all the drugs, alcohol usage, all that shit. But, you know, having that person who Tang as I'm speaking of, uh, I was able to go to him and be like, Hey man, this is what I'm experiencing. And he's like, okay, cool. Now, how do you feel about that? And he was able to like walk me through the dialogue to help unravel those stories in my head and understand that they are just stories, right? So it is important. I think it is important to have a neutral party to hold space. It doesn't need to be your quote unquote healer, but having like a close friend or somebody that's like a therapist or somebody that can hold that space so that we don't just fall victim and fall deeper into those stories, we can start to unravel and realize, again, taking away the shit that's piled up on top of us so we can see how bright and shiny we really are. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And it's, uh, you know, one of the things that our, our culture has um, got away from that I think that we need so much is community. If we look at, it's like, if, if we look at like how trauma gets stuck, um, you know, it's often, it's like, here, here was this, I was in, I was in some, some situation might've been in my own head, might've been a physical, physical trauma. But if I felt that I was isolated or separate or alone, it's like, okay, now it's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to deal with this on my own. It's like anything we go into that with, I'm, I'm just going to handle this all by myself. <laughs> We're not going to right? that, that that's the thing that's getting stuck because it's actually, we we're wired for connection. And so, you know, sometimes that thing, it's like, those are, if, if, if we all look back, what's, what's the trauma that's still held in my body? Well, it's the, it's the trauma that I haven't shared with anybody else or that I haven't really like opened up and gone through with someone together. Mm. And that doesn't need to be a healer. That can be like a, you know, a friend where we're just like, we're sharing. And like, if I'm willing to feel what you're feeling and you're willing to feel what I'm feeling, it's like in our connection, there's just the most this, this incredible healing that gets to happen there. So, yeah, I agree. I think, um, you know, there's there are conversations that we have a lot on this show about, um, about the importance of elders and, and really stepping into each archetypical stage of your life and embracing that, you know, and I think, you know, a lot of us, you know, I'm, I'm 43. I was raised in the eighties and nineties, uh, my, my pivotal ages. And, and, and I can remember through those decades, you know, the, the content on commercials and the content on magazines and stuff like that was all about looking young, acting younger, feeling younger. Here's a cream for that wrinkle. Here's a liposuction for that fat. Here's a, you know, whatever it is to be young. And don't get me wrong, like feel good in your body, feel good about the way you look, about the way you feel, all that stuff. But if we constantly if we're pushing all of our elders to act and feel young, then we'll never step into those next stages, that sage and that crone phase. And when we don't step into those phases, then we can't embrace the knowledge that we've gained and then impart that knowledge down to the, to the, the youngers that are coming up. And so, you know, for myself, like luckily my parents, you know, did, you know, my parents were great when they were alive. They, they raised us as best they could. 
but it wasn't until really I got out on my own, which, you know, a lot of us, we got to get out of the shelter of what we've been raised under and find out what's really going on in the world. And one of those things for me was that lack of that lack of eldership, right? The lack mm-hmm. of like, Hey, and, and it wasn't always just the elders. It was also like almost like a disrespect for the elder of the wisdom that they held. I mean, for us, we just put our old, our, our elders in, in retirement homes. You know, we, we take them out of our lives. We take them out of our communities. We put them away somewhere. And then maybe we go visit them on holidays or maybe you have a better relationship with that. But the embracing of elders where, you know, in a lot of cultures, the elders live with their families. So they can be in the, the family unit, you know, and, and have these little toddlers being, you know, raised by these plus 60 and 70 year old people and imparting that wisdom down. And so there's like this well-rounded knowledge that just gets embraced with all these folks. So I think that's a, that's a big misstep on our, our end right now, at least in the West, that I hope to see uh, changing in the near future is that, you know, just embrace where you're at. You know, embrace mm-hmm. exactly the, the moment that you're in, what you're experiencing, because the way that you're embracing that and the way that you can communicate that down could change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, that's beautiful. And you you know, embracing where you're at, that's, that's, that's kind of the magic, right? That's what, that's what the elders would tell us. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Being here in this moment, you know? Well, with that, why don't we, uh, why don't we pivot to meditation, man? Uh, you know, meditation, yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways to approach meditation. Um, mm-hmm. you know, there's, you know, your Zen way of meditation where it's just sitting nice and stoic, upright, chin chuck, or chin tucked. Um, you can lay down and meditate. You can do walking meditations. Uh, there's guided, there's breath work. There's all different types of meditations you can do. Um, and for me, meditation, I found meditation, well, I can't even say it was meditation. I sat still in the dark and listened to my breath for say 10 minutes a day for almost five years before I actually finally, like uh, probably a couple of years, I wouldn't go five years, but a couple of years before I finally felt like I actually met a meditation state, like a meditative state. But like, I was so stubborn to not like give up. And I think, you know, sometimes that stubbornness kicks me in the ass and sometimes it really helps. And this, I think was one of those helpful moments. Uh, but that just just sitting stoically quiet, no help, no med- no no assistance, no guidance, you know, just like muscling through it. And not to say that's the right way to do it, but that's the modality that I found in the beginning. It's definitely mm-hmm. softened over the years. You know, I've gotten more, more into like a meditative state and an understanding of the cohesiveness and the the talking to the body and the spirit. Uh, but in the beginning, it just it just was what it was, you know. Um, so for you, like what in the, in the workshops that you're doing now, what's the, the, the style of meditation that you lean more towards that you feel is approachable towards, uh, for like the masses? Yeah. So, um, I started in sitting practice maybe 25 years ago, and I think it probably took 10 years before it started getting cool. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. At first 10 years, I'm just like, man, I'm just doing this because everyone says you're supposed to do this. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think I, I think ideally meditation is a is a presence practice, and so what, whatever that is that, that that we do to get there, um, you know, I I love the, you know some of the breathwork practices out there where you know I've had people that have been like I've been meditating for twenty years trying to get to this place that I just got to and and a half hour from this from this breathing technique, and so. Um, the cool thing once someone touches that too i always tell them too like if someone's been doing that cool hey go uh go get back into your meditation practice tonight for a few minutes afterwards because like you know once once you find that place it's so much easier to 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 keep finding it it's like you've you've opened that door and and you can get back there so much easier each time so um you know i i think uh i uh, I'm 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 all about breath for everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I think um, my my favorite meditation practice that I would encourage to everybody is to to be with your breath and whatever it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. It's like when we can find the places. Um, you know, for for instance, I had uh, uh, I I used to to race BMX professionally, and so been in a lot of bike wrecks. Mm. And, and I had a lot of PTSD and, and it, sh- and it would show up when I was driving, like I would be like driving in traffic and just, be, you know, like when everyone's going fast and weaving and stuff and I would be so tense mm. and I'd catch, and I'd catch myself not breathing. And it, and it was just like, and I'd, I'd even have like flashbacks and stuff like that happening. And, um, that got to be my meditation practice of 
from now, you know, turn the radio off and my, my, my car ride is now how much can I open and relax my body? And, and can I be with my breath? Can I be with every single breath for, for whatever the duration of this car ride is? And it was really interesting how that, that practice totally unwinded all of the PTSD. It, uh, I stopped having flashbacks, like, mm. like none of those things happened anymore. And it was, and then all of a sudden that was like my natural, my, my new natural state driving was present. And so I was relaxed and open and I was, you know, with, with what's really happening. And so I think that is, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's like when I, I call it just lower, slower, deeper, softer, Okay. uh, with the breath through the nose, you know, at the grocery store at work, you know, when someone is giving you their opinion that you don't like very much, it's like, <laughs> Can you, can you be with your breath and in your body and like feel what you're feeling? Cause it's like everything, everything becomes a healing opportunity when we're, when we're present. Yeah. I, uh, my fiance and I went and did a, uh, we did a Vipassana meditation, uh, a 10 day silent meditation about five or six years ago. And, uh, the first time and, um, and it was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life. Um, it, it was so just internally difficult for me to one sit that for, for 11 hours a day in meditation. Uh, but also to, to hear on blast without any way to dull or deaden the, the pain, every single story that I've told myself about how mm -hmm. shitty of a person I was. And the, the thing that saved me and the thing they talk about in that meditation is listening to the subtleness of your breath and you breathe and you, 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 when you exhale, you feel that softness across the top of your lip and maybe it's a little warm. And then when you inhale, you feel maybe a little coolness on the top of your lip and you're really focusing on that subtle energy right above your lip, right? It's nothing crazy. It's not holotropic breath. It's nothing intense where you have to count things. It's just that awareness. And, and to the point you made about the car ride and being in a grocery store, like that's something that is always with you, right? Your breath, that type of breath is always with you. You don't have to change anything. It's right there. And so when we just take that time and, and notice the natural abilities of our body and the natural like calmness, the slowness, the awareness, the, the, just the attentiveness of that, there's, there's, it, it automatically will bring us back into a stasis point. And it's so funny because we're all born with all of this stuff. Like we're born with our breath. We're born with the ability to sit. We're born with all of these things, but we're not taught how to use these things. We have to figure it out. You know, we have to go through our dark night or, or find our dark passenger and, and dig ourselves out to find a way to find peace that I wish like this stuff was just, uh, just initially taught like the stuff that you're teaching now, like if we could inter inter interweave this into like, you know, elementary or, or intermediate school curriculum and just have these tools built for these kids. I think this would be just so much more approachable, you know, in the long yeah, run. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious about that. Cause I would, like, if, if we would have learned this when we were five years old and missed out on all of that pain, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm so grateful for all, for all of the pain, for all of the, all of the things that blow up. Cause I like, from now I see it's like how uh, they, they were all so perfect and, and I needed them and they all actually make me better at what I'm doing right now. Right. And so, that's, that's very true. You know, and that's, that's a beautiful statement to make. And that's a hard conversation to have with somebody. Because when, 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 we, they're, when they're in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Right? right. When we can find ways to integrate our pain and integrate the traumas that we've experienced in life and, and have them stop being something that beats us down and have them be our superpower, right? That mm -hmm. the thing that you've experienced in life is going to be the thing that saves your life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I echo that, man. You know, if I, I look back at my life and I look at all like the, the twists and turns that it took and then, you know, that still haven't happened yet. You know, the twists and turns that are still ahead of me. You know, and I've learned so much about myself from, you know, dragging myself up from the, from the ground up, you know, scraping my face across the concrete, you know, like spending those times in the dark night. I just wish that we could get to these understandings without having to go through that shit. But I mean, that's kind of the journey that we're on right now. This is the, the human experience, right? Yeah. 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 It's, um, you know, it's this fascinating thing. I think of, uh, you know, you as a soul. Like you came here to have the human experience and, and uh, right. That is, 
I, I always joke, it's like if our ego had access to intuition, then it would just avoid every hard thing. <laughs> you know, it would dance around every lesson, every hard thing that we've ever experienced. And it's like, no, no, we, we, we came here to experience the separation. Like we came here to, to, to experience the pain. We came here to experience the, the devastation and the loss. Mm -hmm. um, like, right. It's part of the video game. Right. Right. And, and, uh, you know, like, like we, Hey, I, we, we have more, you know, interesting feelings that we haven't felt yet. I always have, I've just, you know, lately, you know, when life throws curveballs um, to me, there's been these moments where it was like, Oh my gosh, like what else, <laughs> you know, what, what other circumstance would, would give me this combination of feelings that I'm feeling right now? Like this is, this is you so unique. Yeah. And and I have, I've had this mantra for myself and I've shared it with others. It's like this, this remembrance that I came here to feel this too. Mm. And so whatever it is, you know, because, because again, it's like, if we're in our minds about anything, it's like, uh, if anything is uncomfortable or we, or, you know, and just, just think something is negative and then it's going to be uncomfortable. Right. Um, and so it's like, you know, these uncomfortable feelings and emotions that are coming up and it's like, where our mind is trying to solve them or make them go away or get rid of them. And when we remember that, it's like, I came here to feel this too. Right? Yeah. I, I came here to feel this depression or this sadness or this anger or whatever the, whatever the experience is that's coming up. It's like, Oh yeah. And now I just dropped into a, a deeper level. Now I'm not fighting it anymore. Now I can actually feel it even deeper, which is like where the real magic is. Yeah. It's funny. I actually have the word remember tattooed on my knuckles facing me. So like, and it's, it's part of that, you know, it's part of that understanding of, you know, remember the journey that you've been on. Remember how much progress you've made. Remember that you made this choice to be here, right? You chose this life. There's actually something that, that really has helped me. And it kind of goes along the same lines of it's, you know, integrating your trauma and, and, you know, it's a hard lesson to learn, but you know, for me, it's been very helpful now that I've gotten to this understanding, but be like, so my mom passed away recently about a year, a little over a year ago, you know, and that was the most like recent, you know, kind of big emotional opportunity in my life. And, uh, and, you know, as I'm sitting there thinking about it, you know, and, and what I can do to help my mom and, and how this is impacting me and the family that I have and all this stuff, you know, the, the idea of reincarnation popped in my head and, you know, I like the idea of reincarnation. You know, I, I don't have many beliefs in the world because I think beliefs get us into kind of trouble. It's hard to pivot from a belief, but the idea is I like to, you know, kind of move around in between. And the idea of reincarnation where, you know, like we've chosen the, the plights of this life that we're in, we've chosen the happiness, we've chosen the challenges, the lessons we want to learn. Like we basically set the parameters of the human experience that we want to embrace. And so, you know, when, again, when my mom was passing away, you know, as sad as I was, this thought came to me that, you know, there's, there's a part of me that set this up that knew I was strong enough to handle this, that knew that I would learn something beautiful from this moment. And whatever that is, I don't know yet. Right. You know, maybe I've learned it, maybe I'm still learning it, but there was part of me that said, Adam, you fucking got this man. You're going to be okay. Right. It's going to suck. It's going to be hard. You're going to cry. You're going to feel the emotions, but that's part of it. Right. Understand that, integrate it and move forward. Right. Process this and, and make this part of your superpower move forward. You know, and I think when we can get to that understanding of like, you know, I've, like, you know, when I go to plant medicine journeys, you know, the, the, the moments that things get like kind of crazy, it's like, okay, I've, I've taken this medicine and the medicine's working. Like I've chosen to take this medicine, the, this life, this is my medicine, right? I've chosen this life for myself. I've chosen these, these understandings. And so here I am now embracing the, uh, the, the journey that I've chosen. Let's, let's make the best of it. Let's figure out how this can impact me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, big, <laughs> it's a big journey, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, with, well, uh, yeah. with, uh, breath work, um, you know, so there, I mean, there's so again, with, like with meditation, there's, there's so many different ways to approach breath work. Mm -hmm. Um, you can go, you know, full in uh, holotropic breath work where you're hyperventilating and, you know, you over oxygenate the body and you have amazing experiences. Um, you can do, uh, like box breath, right? Where you inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four, right? Create a box stacking breath. There's all these different ways to do it. Right. And we mm -hmm. talked about even that subtle breath with a uh, Vipassana or with, you know, driving in your car and just being aware of the breath that's with you. Um, and so, you know, we don't have to always create these big containers for this type of work to happen, right? We can do it whenever we want to just finding the, the right modality that works for you. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, 
so the breath work that you're doing right now uh, that you work with in these big group settings, is it more the, the holotropic breath work or is it kind of a combination of what you're like all the modalities you're working with? Yeah. So I, I, I personally started in holotropic back, uh, you know, a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, this, the, the breath that I, that I lead when I'm doing events and retreats and stuff like that is, uh, it's more of a, uh, rebirthing breath or a circular connected breath. Mm -hmm. So not as where holotropic is more about just breathing hard for a long time, yep. uh, you know, and then it is hyperventilative. Uh, this has got some, just some, some different nuance to it. It's like, there's a little more technique to it. There is a, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a connected breath. And so we're taking out the gaps and the pauses and we're, we're letting the exhale fall. And so it's actually like the surrender, the part of it. And so there's a, right. There's a, hmm. um, you know, there, I lost the words. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, so, so we're playing with the surrender and the connection and, and so, you know, but, but above all really flooding the body with life force or spirit and, and anytime we bring that much energy into the body, it's going to go and heal. And so it's, and it's going to give, it's, it, it's like the, I, I just am always, I, I love the breath so much and I just watch how it, how it, how it meets people and how it serves them and how it always gives them what would serve them the most right now. And so like, if someone has a brand new injury or whatever, it's like, I let them know you're going to probably feel the energy, like go to that injury and, and start, start doing its work. It's going to, right. It's going to, it's going to go to where we need it the most. And so, you know, sometimes that that's emotional. Sometimes that's physical. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's, you know, mystical or, or we're having visitations from loved ones who've crossed over or, you know, having meetings with our guides or angels or, you know, all of the, all the fun mystical experiences that happen as well. Yeah. I bet that's gotta be pretty, pretty, um, just interesting to witness on a, on a, on a regular basis with the, the types of groups that you have. Cause I'm sure you have people that, you know, are very into what you're doing, right? They, they, they're into breath work, into meditation. That's their jam. They love it. They love what you're offering. Great. And then there's probably some people that are like, my friend brought me along and I kind of know what I'm doing, but I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Right. Yeah. And then having seen those folks like have breakthrough moments and have these, yeah. they, you know, their souls touched or, you know, they, they have an experience of like feeling a spirit around them. Yeah. Uh, for somebody that has never experienced that before, just the awe and the, just the, the shock that kind of comes with that is such a beautiful, beautiful awakening moment. <clears throat> so seeing that on a regular basis, I'm sure is just super gratifying to you. It's kind of, it's kind of the best gig ever. I, I love it. <laughs> That, that's one of my favorites. I love, you know, I, 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 I set it up as we're going in a group and I talk about a bunch of different experiences that are possible to happen in there. And I love it when people come to me at the end and be like, you know, when you were talking about all those things, I thought that you were full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about or, or whatever, whatever they're thinking. And then they go and then they have the, some of the experiences that I was talking about and it really just blows them away. And so I always love to put that back like, Hey, what, what else do you think is not possible? Right. What else have you written off because, because you haven't experienced it yet or because you haven't had that yet. Cause it's really, I, I mean, I, I truly know that, that anything is possible at, at, at any time. And yeah, uh, yeah I, it, it all is. I mean, I've seen, I've, I've experienced enough. I've, I've witnessed even more. Um, just, just truly anything is possible at any time. Yeah, it really is. And once you start experiencing it yourself, I mean, this at least for me, like I was a very data driven person back in my my previous years, and and even so now, like I, you know, the, the, with the I, I love that there are there are data points now for a lot of the stuff that we're working in, right? And I and I, if there are data points, great, let's see them, right? I love to see it, right? But also, I, I'm very big on the gnosis idea that. I mean, you can have an experience that you may never be able to put into context, into words, into emotions, into anything, but you felt it and experienced it deeply and it moved you in some kind of way. And whether or not you can convey that to another human being doesn't negate the fact that it happened to you, right? And somebody can rationalize whatever they want to rationalize and explain away whatever they think they can explain away. But when we have those experiences that you just really can't explain and understand, it's like, wow. Like you said, what else do I, what else have I made my mind up about that I just am completely, could be completely wrong on, right? And it yeah. gives us that opportunity. And that's, I think, part of that awakening. It's not always an awakening like I just saw God or something. It's that awakening of like, shit, what, where have I been this entire time? 
Like I've just been kind of like blandly moving through life and I forgot to see like how beautiful that mountain is or how pretty that fucking tree is right there. The fact that there's a sun in the sky, holy shit, that's pretty awesome, right? And we start to become aware of just the beauty that surrounds us on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, everywhere. Right. All over just, the damn place. Yeah. And it's it's those little things. It's funny because I was talking to a, a friend of mine the other day that's uh, uh, just about to have a kid. And my kids are uh, 14 and 19 now. So they're adults, young adults now. And uh, and she was saying, you know, she's like, I can't wait till I, you know, see those little smiles and those little twinkles in the eyes and pinch the cheeks. And I'm like, yeah, totally. Right. Because you got to hold on to that because that kid is going to put you through the fucking ringer. That's its <laughs> job, right? And that's our test as parents is to see how triggered we can be and how comfortable we are in our own personal abilities to help push that aside so we can raise this child. So like when that child smiles at you and you see that little toothless grin, it's like, yeah, that's great because at five minutes, you're going to shit all over yourself. You're going to start crying. I got to figure out what's going on, bathe, get dinner, all this stuff. So you got to hold on to those moments. Right. And so I think that's the same thing when, the, when we start to find and, and, and move through our quote unquote awakening process is you see those beautiful moments. You see the beauty in the, the, the sludge that you've been moving through. You find the, 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 the realization, you find the aha moment, right? We hold on to those because it's going to be a while before you find another one, or you're going to continue to trudge through that shit while you're unpacking all this stuff that you're finding out about yourself. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's, it's like, it's important to hold on to those little moments and just really embrace those because we can grow those into something more beautiful than you ever thought. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I wanted to come back to something that you said earlier, um, about, uh, you know, we're here to experience the emotional spectrum. We're here to, uh, you know, to, to, feel pain and suffering, right? We're here to figure out how to embrace all these emotions. And I was, and the reason I bring it back is that I was listening to a person talk a while ago and they were talking about how in this earth plane, if we're constantly trying to find enlightenment or awakening, we're shortchanging our human experience because in a way we're already uh, spirits, right? We've chosen to be here to have a human experience. So if we're spirits and we've chosen to be here, but we're continuously trying to use this human experience to find the spirit that we think we are, then are we negating this experience by sitting in meditation, by finding the, you know, the unpacking all that stuff and not actually being humans and going out and like going for hikes or going for, you know, doing, doing humanistic type shit. So yeah, I, I, that yeah. just kind of landed with me in an interesting way. Yeah, I, I feel the same way, actually. I see people chasing enlightenment, and it's like, you, you're already enlightened. Like, come and come join us. Come come be an idiot. Like, <laughs> like, come, <laughs> come do silly things and make mistakes and, uh, right, get in, get in relationships and get triggered and trigger other people. Like, that's, that, that's a part of the beautiful experience that we came here to have. Yeah. It's like, you know, we can't, you know, that, that was one of the things I think uh, I really appreciated about the Vipassana experience I talked about earlier was that not all of us can be monks and nuns, right? We, we can't, you know, isolate ourselves in like the Himalayas in a, in a monastery or, you know, give ourselves to God. You know, a lot of us are ho- what they call householders. You know, we're still a part of this society. We're part of this community. And so one of the purposes of Vipassana was to show you what it's like to live a monastic type life for about 10 days. Silence, you know, a sparse, a sparse food, you know, you, you, you celebrate, you know, the spirit and all that stuff. And so it gives you that opportunity to see what it's like, but, but you can't like, for me, I, the, the life that I've chosen now, I can't live in that meditation because that is, uh, that's not the journey I'm in. I'm not a monk mm-hmm. in this life. I am. Adam, the householder in some kind of way. So it's like, it's, it's taken that opportunity to learn what it's like to give yourself that dedication, um, so that you can remember as you go back into your life, into this humanistic world, you can have those, those ideas of that reverence that you once held. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the monk path is actually the easier path, right? Like that's, you know, there are, there are less challenges. There are, uh, you're working with so so many less things in life, so many obstacles and, and things that come up, and so um, you know, I, I I feel like you can bring that that monk's path into 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 this into into right now. Yeah, I, I was I was asked recently. You know, they were talking about like you know what 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 do you think a, a master is? 
like like you know like someone that's a master and to me that's someone that's not trying to change the way that they feel right now mm. wow it's like if you're just if really being with right okay something something happened uh, I'm, I'm, uh, to have these emotions coming up it's like yes be with these emotions you know be with be like whatever whatever each one of us is invited to feel right now like that's that, that's where the magic is yeah i i watched a, an interview with the dalai lama um it was probably a number of years ago i just watched it a couple of years ago but i think it came out in like the early 2000s but he was talking about um anxiety right and how for the longest time he wouldn't didn't want to hear the message anxiety had for him so he would push anxiety away nope you're not coming in this is a peaceful place no anxiety allowed and then one day he was sitting in a meditation and anxiety came knocking on his door and instead of pushing anxiety away he invited anxiety in for tea it was like okay hey you know you're obviously you're, you're part of me right um, you have something to tell me. So instead of me pushing you away, let's invite you in, create the container for me to hear you instead of just like all of a sudden being taken by anxiety and like, Oh shit, you know, let's, let's create that container. Anxiety, please come in, have a seat. Let me hear your message. And the, I think the message, and, and this is something I talk about in my sound baths, but we have the discernment to act on the message, but we we just need to hear the message, right? Hear what fear has to say, hear what anxiety has to say, hear what joy has to say. You know, it's up to you whether or not to act on it. But if we don't take the time to hear the message, that message is going to get louder and more aggressive because it needs to be heard. So taking the time and creating whatever you need to create to find your way to hear that, I think is very important for us. And it gives the opportunity of that, that full spectrum of the human emotions, because then like to the point you just made, I'm not trying to change the emotion I'm in. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm understanding why I've made it here and what this yeah. message is telling me. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. And then to take that, you know, up, up a notch, it's like anxiety is all, like, we're, we're also, you know, connected beyond measure to, to, to all of life, to all of the other humans. And so, if you could design a life that was totally anxiety free, you would still be aware of anxiety because anxiety is in the field because there are other people that are, that are swimming in anxiety. And so one of the, one of the tricks that, that, I mean, many of the, the mind has many tricks to avoid feeling. One of the ways that, that it avoids it is by, by, by deciding that everything that I feel is mine or that it has something to do with me. And so here, here it is. It's like, I'm having a, I'm, I'm aware of anxiety, but as soon as I turn it into my anxiety, now I've got some story, you know, that may or may not be true. That's actually in the way of like, what's really happening here and what this, you know, and, and what might actually this be. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, I, I don't know if any emotions are belong to us or if they're right. Yeah. This is my, this is my sadness. And it's like, it's that idea of my sadness that's actually getting in the way of the healing or, or, or whatever, getting in the way, or, or as you said, of like what sadness is trying to offer us. Yeah. Right. Because I'm, I'm telling this what it is rather than like letting it inform me what it is. And that's, you know, during, uh, it's funny you mentioned that during COVID, um, we did a bunch of talks for, uh, for schools, you know, cause it, it's teachers were doing their best to try to fill content for online schooling. And we did some meditation talks with kids about, um, uh, about, you know, meditation, how to find meditation. And one of the things we talked about to kind of like put it into perspective that these kids can understand was, you know, think about your mind as a lake or a pond and the fish swimming around are the emotions, right? And you can see fear swim by, but you're not fear. It's just swimming in the ocean that you have, right? This, the pond that you've made. So, because when you're talking about my anxiety, it's like once we identify with it, it becomes a part of us. And it's like we, we defend it almost. Like we identify with it so much that it becomes part of our character, like my illness, my cancer, my depression, my whatever it is. Uh, there's a Dr. Zach Bush that, uh, that uh, does a lot of beautiful work. And one of the, uh, the frameworks that he, that he works in is oncology. And he does uh, cancer research for both uh, animals, domesticated animals and humans. And he said that uh, there's 
the, the treatment for both animals and humans is very similar, right? We have chemotherapies, we have uh, tumor removals, the surgery. So all of it's very similar between humans and animals. But the success rate with animals is almost 90% success once they've given this treatment. And whereas humans, it's like maybe 40%, 30%. It's really low. And one of the hypotheses he's working with is that dogs and animals, domesticated animals, have a different consciousness than we do. So when we learn that diagnosis of cancer, I am now cancer. I have mm-hmm. cancer. I identify mm-hmm. with cancer. And even if that tumor is removed or we have the, ther- the therapies, if that story is strong in your head and you identify with it, it's still part of you. Whereas mm-hmm. an animal, you remove that and they're like, cool, I'm a fucking dog. I'm going to go do dog type shit, right? And that, so that consciousness is different. We identify with the story. Whether we want to or not, it becomes part of us. And so Mm -hmm. it's like finding those ways to release that part, that story, not just the story of like, I'm not enough, but the story of I am sickness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like the war on cancer is the best thing ever that happened to cancer. Like if (laughs) if that's right, it's the war on the war on it just, just creates more of it. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've had the opportunity to work with, with many people on their, on their healing journeys from cancer and, um, you know, there's this, there's this cool moment that happens, you know, either people got there or, you know, I get to guide, guide people into this space of realizing like, you know, everybody, you know, kind of gets to this place where they realize it's like, Oh wait, the, the fighting against this is actually like pouring fuel on the fire. Right. You know? And so they, they recognize when someone gets diagnosed with cancer, it's like the tumor starts growing exponentially because now, now all their waking hours, they're, they're resisting this and they're fighting this and they're, they're battling this separate thing. And, uh, you know, when people realize, so for so many people that, that, that healed through it, it's like, they realize it's like, wait, I can't fight against this. You know, it's like, Hey, you can be here. Kind of like talking about allowing the emotion to be here. Like mm-hmm. the Dalai Lama, like make, let's have tea. Like you can be here, but Hey, can you not get any bigger? Cause you're going to kill both of us. Right. And, and, and there's once, once that allowance starts, once, once that, uh, once we make the, the the invitation or the room for something to be here, now healing can start to happen. Mm. Whereas, like in in the battle, like nobody nobody's healing in the middle of the war. Right. We actually have to like we actually have to to find some peace first, and that's when the healing begins. Mm. And so, you know, when people talk about when they talk about you know people do the most healing when they're sleeping, I think that's just because you're not messing with yourself anymore for six to eight hours yeah and so it's like you can turn all 24 hours into a healing state it's like if we're just allowing whatever the experience that we're having breathing with it feeling all the feelings that come up in it and not trying to manage or control any of it it's like it's that that puts us in a healing state all day long wow I, uh, it, it's funny, uh, you know, we, we mentioned wanting to, to move towards this topic here, uh, at the beginning of the show. And I think this is that perfect opportunity because, you know, identifying with the healing and the ability to heal is, is beautiful. Right. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, I'll talk to myself, I'll speak of myself. Um, I took that a little too far and found that I started to hide in my meditations. And like, I, I felt once I finally started to feel the meditations benefiting me, um, you know, I was feeling the story start to wash away and I was feeling the peace and the calmness. Um, uh, it became almost an addiction to mm-hmm. sit in that space. And, and I had a spiritual mentor one time a couple of years ago. Uh, she asked me, she's like, you know, how much are you meditating now? And I'm like, uh, probably like, you know, seven to 10 times a day. I do one in the morning for like 30 to 45 minutes and then like 10 minute meditations throughout the day. And she was like, well, when do you actually live life then? Because you're just you're in your meditations all the time. Like you're not a monk, you're not a nun, you're not, this isn't your job, right? This is, this is a a practice that can help you. But if you live there, you're not helping yourself, right? It's not helping anymore. It's an addiction. I'm like, fuck man. Now I can't even, I can't even heal right. You know, (laughs) I went from addicted to alcohol, now addicted to meditation. Uh, but you know, I, I imagine that's, I'm not, I'm not unique to that. I imagine that's something that probably you see a lot in the work that you do. Yeah, I think that's, um, I, I, it's like we can turn anything into that. It's like I had a lot of healthy practices that I was using to avoid feeling. Hmm. 
right and so again in like meditation it's like oh, i'm really stressed out if i go and i can go sit down and close my eyes for 10 minutes and like make that stress go away or not not feel it as much or whatever and so you know these things it, it's like what's our intent behind it right. right it's like i didn't like that feeling and so i went to meditate whereas uh what what i would say it's like let's let's actually use the meditation to feel that feeling even more mm. Let's let's use that meditation to like say, okay, can I put? Is there anything that that I can set down or open up even more, so that I can feel that thing that I didn't want to feel? Um, and so, you know, my I had a uh, I had a big one of exercise. Exercise was like I could always could always exercise and feel better. And I would turn you you know I had some experiences where it was like you know a, a, maybe two hours with a funky feeling that I used to stretch stretch into like six months of like getting close to it back and off getting close to it back and off and so it was like this six month depression or it could have been like a two-hour afternoon of really spending some time and, and really opening up and getting to know it so yeah um, yeah it's like uh it, it's just to, to, to notice where are we doing the things from right that's i i would say you know all of the addictions are actually just a practice in avoiding feeling or, or changing the way that we feel yeah yeah, I have a good friend of mine that uh, talks a lot about how uh, you know we have a we have an issue with sitting sen with sensations, <clears throat> and uh, you know emotional sensations, you know bodily sensations, and and it's just it, we're we're in a culture that wants to just end that and move to the next thing, like even joy, right? We we have a hard time sitting with joy because we're waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? Mm -hmm. So we can't really fully embrace happiness because we're just waiting for the bad thing to happen. So, you know, I like what you just said about inviting that in during your meditations or during your peaceful practices, inviting that emotion in and really getting a chance to understand, you know, what it's there for, what it's telling you, um, the, the information that it has, because, you know, it's, it's part of you for a reason. You know, it's like when people yeah, yeah. say, kill your ego. It's like, no, 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 we can't do that because the, ego's, the ego needs to be there. It doesn't need to yeah. drive the bus all the time, but it needs to be a part of us. Yeah. Yeah. As we're, as we're speaking about this, I have, I, you know, this would be a really cool study if somebody did it, but, you know, talking about, you know, okay, so, so a new war has started on the planet and, and we all feel that like we're all, we're all connected to that in some way. Like that's probably creating some sort of like discomfort or some sort of like, that's not a, right. That's the, there's, there's some stuff in there and it would be really interesting if we got to track like addictions or whatever, or, um, you know, watching, like, like I noticed, I noticed myself this week just being like, you know what, I want to keep like just catching myself. It's like, I really want to keep snacking. Mm. Like I just, I caught myself doing that this week. It's like, I want to keep snacking and okay, well, what is, okay, what is, what is this feeling? Cause I know I'm not hungry right now. Mm. There is an uncomfortable feeling here that if I throw some food at it, it, it changes. But if we look at, you know, when there's, when there's big events, it's like, yeah, we're, we're all feeling the war in all of the wars. And, and those aren't fun to feel, you know, those are, those are uncomfortable feelings. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, if we're ever going to heal war on the planet, I think that probably takes a lot of us like feeling how, how much pain there is in it, how, how much it hurts, all of the crazy stuff that comes up. Um, yeah because of it because when we don't feel it again then we're just going into well right it's like the war doesn't end the, you know it's, there's there's not real peace they mm -hmm. still don't like each other you know they're still just waiting to to go to war again because they have all of these unresolved feelings yeah and if 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 we don't feel our feelings then we often project them out onto onto others and so you know this this invitation uh i think that's since we're talking about it for everyone that's listening to this it's like if we got to spend a little bit of time just feeling it's like wow what are the what are the uncomfortable feelings happening with the wars right now can can i feel a piece of them yeah. right? can i can i open up can i breathe can i can i let some of this like move and, and transmute through me wow that's that's a really hard, beautiful thing, you know, cause especially yeah. like, you know, the, the, you know, where we're at right now with, you know, say out Israel and Palestine or the Hamas and, you know, it's very polarizing, you know, we're, yeah. we're, 
you know, I think this, this is a really interesting opportunity because, you know, we're, we have that opportunity to sit with those things that we're triggered with, right. Whether it's a, you know, a family member, it's a news story that we're, you know, that's, you could obviously see is swayed one way, you know, there's so much information that's being thrown around with these, with this current situation that we're in. But I think there's also a bit more of awareness with humanity to see, like, I don't really believe what the narrative is being told. And that gives us an opportunity to really kind of hopefully look at ourselves and say, what do I really feel is tr- the truth that I, that I can understand? You know, yeah. what's, what's the, 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 the place that I can be, you know, where's the space that I can hold, you know, and, and I can say for myself and so many times in the past, like I would hear an opinion and be like, yeah, that sounds good. I'll go with that. You know, and they'd be like, ah, fuck that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But now, I mean, there's, there's that opportunity really to, to see how this information really sits with you, see if you actually believe what's going on, but have that opportunity to see the emotions, right? And to sit with those emotions and to really embrace and understand them instead of trying to like shuffle them off and just sit with your decisiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because as, as soon as we've chosen a side in anything, we're not really feeling anymore. Wow, that's a good right? statement. Like we've just, we've just polarized, we've just jumped into polarity and it's like, that's, we're kind of just voting for the, for the thing that we don't want. Yeah. And so it really is. It's like, Hey, what if nobody's right and nobody's wrong in this? And like, let's see what, right. What do we, if, if we got everyone back into their hearts, there'd be no more wars. Yeah. Right. No, nobody, nobody is evil in their hearts. It's like, this is, this is their, this comes from from their unresolved wounding, you know, from their, you know, the, the ancestral unresolved wounding and, and all of this stuff. And, and again, it's like, if, if we don't have the wherewithal to, to really investigate that in ourselves, then, then we project it onto the next person. <laughs> and we're really good at projecting as humans. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah. There's a, uh, there's an idea in quantum physics, <clears throat> excuse me, called quantum. Uh, it's a, one of the theories of quantum entanglement. And, um, and the idea is that if you have a mass, like say a shape and you have 1% of that mass starts to move in another direction, that's all, all, only 1%. That's all you need to help move the rest of that mass to start swaying in that other direction. And the reason I bring that up is because I feel like this is kind of that place that we're in, in a, in a, in a worldwide spiritual level, right? I think there's, there's enough people that are, that are starting to understand that this isn't what's presented to us. Isn't really all that there is, right? You can definitely take it for face value, but you can also start to see through some of the shit and be like, "Mm, I don't really believe this anymore. Right. And so that, that collective belief is starting to sway the masses and it's that slow movement, right? Because I think if we're, we're, we're so entrenched in the economics and the, the, the culture of the world that if we just, you know, pivoted all of a sudden it would blow up a lot of things, right? A lot of the structure, a lot of people would probably suffer in this way. So it's that slow shift, that slow migration of, you know, changing the ideas, changing the way that we approach life, changing the way we approach government, changing the way we approach military, all this stuff. And we start to move this, that, that 1% grows a little bit more and starts to pull that mass. And then before you know it, you know, it's, it's that, that altruisticness is starting to shift, right? And we're starting to become a little more conscious and aware. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and if, you know, again, it's, uh, like, it's, it's the hologram, right? It's like the microcosm is, is in the macrocosm. And so when we look at our own personal healing journey, it's like when someone, oftentimes when someone starts their own healing journey, it gets a lot harder at first. Yeah. Right. Cause it's like, I didn't even realize all this stuff was in here or I thought that I dealt with that or like, and so like oftentimes our healing journey, it's like, it's, that it sometimes it gets a lot uglier at first and yeah. it's a lot more challenging and it's like yeah that was there yeah. I, you know we were like you we were trying to pretend that wasn't there like that was there and and once we and when we can walk through this when we when we can really be with and feel and transmute this it's like oh my god yeah it does get very beautiful it does it does get really incredible and things get so much totally different time and it's like that, that to me feels like what's happening in the world. It's like all of these, all of that hate, all of the racism, all the crazy stuff. It was like, it was there and underneath, but it's, it's getting stirred up. It's coming to the surface. And it's like that, that's how we, you know, we weren't going anywhere with that, with that and underlying, like the, those are anchors to us in our, in our personal 
in our personal healing journey and it's anchor in the collective healing journey. And so it is, it's, you know, I'm, I'm very hopeful that, that this is just this, this is everything that needed to happen for us to like, take it up. Like let's step up to a new level of, of heart centered living, um, you know, as a collective. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And I, I agree, man, you gotta, you know, sometimes it, it gets way worse before it gets better. And, and that can be discouraging for a lot of us on that journey, but you know, it's, it, you really have to unravel how deep, whatever it is you're going through goes, you know, it's not just topical. It's not on the surface. We got to pull that shit out by the roots. And to do that, you got to ask those tough questions and sit with the hard answers and, you know, talk to people with differing opinions, see how you get triggered, see what you can do about those things, you know, and then find the modalities to help you with it. Yeah. 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 So I know I, I, I it's we, we don't understand i have worked with many people where it's like right I, you know they're they, they start going through the hard stuff and it's like no this is good right this is this is the journey to you getting everything you've ever wanted yeah. right and uh and if we leave if we left that stuff in there it 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 doesn't stay down there it's it's always trying to come up and we leave it down and we leave it down there long enough and yeah it starts to it starts to get pretty gnarly right it turns into to disease it turns into bigger and bigger problems because yeah. it's like it it needs to be addressed and so um you know there, there's there's more there's like more tools and support probably than ever before to do it and so um that's very beautiful yeah Maybe that's, you know, that's also leading to that, that, you know, collective consciousness shift is that people are starting to maybe be fed up with all the side effects that, you know, Western medicine kind of uh, offers for the, the band-aids, right? You know, like, hey, take this pill, your anxiety might go away, but you're going to have 75 other conditions now to deal with. And probably those are going to cause your anxiety too, because now you're going to be anxious about the shit that you're dealing with. Yeah. You know, instead of that, now we have... Well, okay, maybe this this pill might not just like you know take away the pain right away, uh, but this breath work, if you give it this amount of time, that pain not only will go away, but it might stay away. You don't have to take this pill all the time, right? Now you know how to sit down and meditate. Now you know how to go move your body, right? And you're you're finding these ways that that you can heal the self through the self and not have like this external thing that is going to solve all your problems, right? Yeah, yeah, because because there's no such thing, no. and. You know, if, if, if everyone does do their research on those things, they really like, you, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not against any of those. Like, I think there's, if someone is in a, if in a pinch and they need a short term, you know, uh, if, if they need help in the short term, I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm like, man, if, if, if somebody has a therapist or a doctor that's like saying that you have to be on this for the rest of your life, it's like, go find a new therapist or doctor. <laughs> yeah. Because again, it's not, it's, um, it's, there, there, there's a relief or there's a comfort, but we do have to, you know, whatever, whatever this is, um, it, it, it has gifts in there for us. Like there, it's like underneath, um, you know, I, I, I always tell people, it's like, what if everything that you were looking for was found in everything you didn't want to look at? Hmm. And so it's, again, it's like, everyone's looking for all these things. And it's like, what don't you want to look at? Oh, I don't want to look at this, this pain from my past. And it's like, yeah, well, what happens when we explore that and, yeah. and make room and room for that and invite that in? And then, and then all of a sudden you have more abundance or like, you know, this, this, this condition healed, or you don't have whatever going on anymore. And so um, you know, I, I think we're shifting into that yeah. and, and people are, people are realizing that, uh, that it's like, okay, that doesn't work in the way in which it's been used. And, and so what else, what else is possible? What else is available here? Yep, definitely. And, and, and there's more and more like just quality, there, there's more and more amazing people on the planet to, to support people in those journeys and that really know what they're doing and can prepare them for like, Hey, you're going to have a dark night of the soul. Like your apps, you know, if, uh, if, especially coming off of you're on a medication for a long time, it's like, there's going to be some really hard times and right. let's make sure that you have some support or some resources that, that's available for you there to, to carry you through those hard times. Yeah. 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 And I think that, you know, having, making sure people know that they, that they, that the, that supports there for them, you know, is, is yeah. so important. You know, and it's because a lot of times, like, we don't even realize we're addicted to something or we've been masking something until we realize it, 
you know, and it's like, oh my God, I've been taking this medication for that long, or I've been, you know, shortchanging this emotion for so long that, that the, the, just the thought of fully hearing what that emotion has to say, or fully experiencing that condition without the medication that you're taking can be terrifying, you know? Mm -hmm. So knowing that you have support, knowing that this is part of the process, knowing that, you know, that you can do this and finding the, the people that can hold the space, and I think it's so important. I mean, it, even even something as simple as like Tylenol, you know, I mean, Tylenol, we, we've had that around for almost 100 years now and been able to test it. And the, the active uh, acetam acetaminophen in Tylenol, you know, is now shown to like deaden your senses. Like, mm -hmm. So if you're in, in, I mean, during the 50s and 60s, I know people that, that took Tylenol every single day, you know, for, for heart uh, issues or for blood pressure issues. And, and now, yeah, we're, we're seeing like, not only is it, is it, you know, messing with the chemistry of our body, but it's also deadening our natural senses, like empathy mm -hmm. and, and understanding of love, right? Because we were basically teaching ourselves not to trust our bodies anymore. Hey, there's yeah. a pain in my knee, take that Tylenol, that pain is going to go away. Well, that pain is there for a fucking reason, right? It, 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 it showed itself, it manifested itself as that, does that sensation to send you a message? And if you keep deadening that message, that message is going to get a little bit stronger, but also you're teaching your body not to listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We still have people, you know, the majority of the time, the stomach ache is not a stomach ache. Right. right. This is, this is, if we, if we get to really explore that and go, Hey, what is this trying to show me or tell me? And it's like, we often find like, Oh, Hey, look, here's right. I just, uh, I just shoved this feeling down or, or I didn't speak up for myself or, you know, we find it's like, Oh no, this was my body letting me know the that something's off or that what i was doing is okay you know you were talking about anxiety and it was like uh, stress and anxiety are like these are these are our best friends like when stress and anxiety come around they're always trying to help us and so i was i always let everybody know you know it's like test it out for yourself don't believe me but like stress and anxiety are usually letting us know that we're not present hmm. we're not we're not breathing and we're usually believing something that's not true you know? Yeah. And, and, and again, it's like, Oh yeah, thank you. I was stressed out because I was worried about what was happening next week. And it's like, yeah, no, wait, let's come back to here. Next week doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm here in this moment. There, there is no next week. Uh huh. Well, it's I, actually, it's funny. I'll, I'll speak to the Dalai Lama again is a different conversation I heard. Uh, but he also talked about, um, in another talk I heard recently about how your your nemesis or your enemy can be the biggest gift that you've ever had, right? Because that person is going to show you things about yourself that you maybe thought that you had figured out, that you'd fixed, or things that you didn't even know that you had to work on, right? Mm -hmm. the, the the triggers that can come up from somebody telling that you're wrong or, you know, like, you know, making you feel embarrassed, right? And so what we need, those people are important in our lives and those because they show us those emotions and how volatile they can be. And how probably much we don't want to hear that message, but need it. Totally. And, and if it is possible to just get rid of that person, the universe usually just sends us another person <laughs> that, that is going to show us. Cause again, it's like, what's being triggered is there, there's always, if, if I'm triggered, there's, there's always something in me to feel. And, and what's really funny is like, as soon as you have felt all that stuff, it's also funny how maybe that person just removes themselves. It's like, you don't need them in your life anymore. Or, right. 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 Now they're... <laughs> yep. It's so, all the problem solved itself. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Problems always solved. I, I've, I've found that just ah, thousands of times. It's like when I feel the feelings I didn't want to feel, because again, it's like, I want to solve the problem so I don't feel this way. When I actually go to the feeling first and mm. really get into it and feel it, it's like most things just take care of themselves. Yeah. yeah. And that, you know, it's that, you know, we're again, like we're our best teachers, you know, if we can, yeah. if we can hold that space and learn how to, to under, understand that, you know, we can really figure that stuff out. But also, you know, having somebody to help you hold that space is beautiful, you know, to help yeah. kind of like you give, give you some of that dialogue that you might need. And, you know, teachers, what I love about a teacher is they know when to push the gas and they wouldn't know when to take it, take off the, the gas. You know, it's like, hey, you've got too much information. Let's marinate on that for a minute. Or, you know what, you've been doing good. Here's a little bit more. Let's see how you do with that stuff. Yeah, I have an open invitation to everybody in my life that, uh, like, you can try to trigger me anytime. <laughs> like, 
if you if you can find something like find something to to bring up find something to trigger me and because because again that just gives me an opportunity to go deeper with this part of myself that i haven't fully felt yet because when because again when when we have felt that that thing no longer is a trigger it doesn't bother us anymore and yeah. so uh so i don't know if i've extended that to you but you're well <laughs> oh, man, that is a, that's a very courageous courageous ask <laughs> just from anybody <laughs> I feel like I would say that to my family and then like duck and be like, okay, Hey guys, trigger me if you want to. Oh shit. No, (laughs) but that's, you know, I love, I I love that. That's, that's, that shows like such the, not, not confidence in the journey that you're on, but the willingness to explore it. Right. Please try to find a way to take me out of this, this, you know, container that I've made for myself so that I can know how to deeper and deeply work on myself. Right. What's, mm-hmm. what's the next thing that I need to work on? Because I don't know what it is yet, especially if you're mm-hmm. asking for it. <laughs> That's a strong space, man. Good for you. Well, yeah, it's like, it's um, like, it just shows us the next blind spot. And, I, and I'm pretty sure I, I don't think uh, I, I know there's not a finish line here. Um, right. There's, um, with, with, with all of the experiences, we can go deeper with all of them. Right. And so cool. Like I've really felt this, this trauma from my childhood. I've really gone deep with it. It doesn't bother me anymore, but that doesn't mean that I still can't even go deeper or there's another piece to feel with it. <coughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, each yeah, one, so, each opportunity is another layer to, to peel back. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, right. Like, like even with, even with like what we're feeling now, we can feel it even more. Mm. Right. We can, we can open up even more. It's like, I can open up my heart even more right now. Cause there's, again, there's no such thing as 100% open. Right. Right. I'm in the most blissful, ecstatic, enlightened place I've ever been. And oh my God, I can open up even more. Mm. That's and That's such a beautiful idea to have, right? Like if I feel this good here and, you know, I still have this much life, I have this much more experience, I can unpack this much more, like think of the depth that you can actually get to. Yeah. Cause wow. I used to see, cause, cause the ego often turns that into a, a problem, right? That, that there's more to do or there's, there's, there's more to go or, or, and it's like, I've, I've kind of like laid it out in a visual like this. It's like, you're standing in the middle of infinite Mm-hmm. right you can look backwards and see how far you've come and you can look forwards and see how far there is to go and and realizing that you're always in the middle of that oh. right like as far as you go in into the more it's like you're still right in the middle of the infinite and so this is not a problem like it's not a bad thing it's not a problem that i haven't gone as far as i know that i can go with this or, or that this is still hanging out or whatever it's like it's not a problem there's always more yeah Wow. I love that. Cause then it also gives you that, that chance to look at things as an opportunity. You yeah, know, yeah. it's, it's all of this, all this is an opportunity for me to deepen me and to find depth in my practice, my, my sense of being, or maybe finding help or somebody else, uh, a way to help somebody else. Yeah. And, and there's a piece too of, of, of realizing when that story creeps up, like as soon as I get this thing, or as soon as I get to here, or as soon as I resolve here, then then it's going to be different. And it's like, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still going to be in the middle, and my mind is just going to come up with a new thing. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. Cool. Cool. I got. I got. I I just achieved every single one of my goals and dreams and aspirations, and then my mind is just going to make up some new stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have this. Okay. Cool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And when you, and when you realize that that's the game and that it, that it's not a, it's not a problem to solve, right? It's like, cool. Yeah. There's always going to be another thing. Yeah. Right. There's always going to be some, some new uncomfortable thing or something to go deeper in or like something to, to feel in a different way or whatever it is. And it's like, cool. So I'm, I'm perfect right where I'm at. Yeah. Well, I think that perspective shift too might give people, it might release some pressure on people too, because I mean, as you're saying that, I'm thinking about, you know, myself and the the path that I lived, uh, you know, my corporate life. And it was, there were those, those benchmarks, they called them, right? You, mm-hmm. you hit this thing and then you have success and then you hit this next benchmark and you have success. And then like, there's all these qualifiers that are put in there that like, you need to reach this point. And, and I remember reaching those points and been like, 
uh, well, this this still feels shitty. You know, yeah. I don't I don't feel like I've accomplished something, even though I got the title or I got the bonus or I got the raise or whatever the hell it is that I was working towards. There was still like this sense of emptiness because I mean, down deep, it's like, well. I still have all this life to live, so I haven't really like checked the box. I haven't really put a delineation point anywhere. It's just I've gotten to where somebody else told me I should go, mm-hmm. right? And but that idea that you just said of like we're always in that middle point. So as we find these successes, it's like well, that just that success unlocked your ability to find different success in a different way now, mm-hmm. and then that success is going to ability to to unlock a different you know ability for you. And we just yeah. continue on in that that middle point, you know. And I just love that. I love that analogy. Yeah, I, lo- I love that you speak. You know, pressure. Pressure is a beautiful teacher as well. Yeah. Right. When 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 we feel pressure, it's just always a sign that we're lying to ourselves. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like if I if I squeeze hard enough, or if I really like, if I get really tense, then I'm going to go faster. I'm going to get this done, or or whatever. And it's like. Or, you know, I, I can only do what I can do today. Yeah. Right. And, and, and why did that doesn't have to be stressful? Like I'm, I'm going to get done everything I possibly can, or, or, you know, I'm going to do what I can do and, and it might not be, and it might not hit the deadline. Right. It might not be, it might not be what you want it to, to get out of me today. Um, but it's like, but again, that's no pressure. It's like, I can only do what I can do. Yeah. There's a the the Navy SEALs have a motto, and um, it's a uh, it's called it's uh, they go slow is smooth and smooth is fast, right? Yes. And so and I and I the reason I love that is because you know in my previous lives you know say we I've worked in restaurants right so we'd have these rushes and all of a sudden like you know food gets in the window drinks have to go out and all of a sudden everybody's just running around chicken's head cut off trying to drop food and drinks and get the people taken care of, and and through that speediness like we lose steps. Right, because maybe we forget to grab silverware and now I gotta backtrack, or maybe I drop a plate or you know, whatever happens. And so the reason I love that the, that motto is that the Navy SEALs they they can't fuck up, right? They've 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 got deadlines, they've got people that will die if they don't do what they do, right? Their their teammates, the people they're trying to save, whatever it is, right? And so the way that they practice is they practice slowly to get everything as smooth as they can because that smoothness is your fastness. That's your speed because you're not going to miss steps. You've ritually made this understanding of this is the way that it goes. This is the speed that it goes and everything becomes second nature so that when shit hits the fan, you're within that speed and that, that slowness, that smoothness so that you don't miss the steps. You don't have to backtrack. You don't have to pick something up. You dropped because you've ritually gained that, that smoothness because you've slowed down enough. And I love that idea in life because, because we have so many opportunities where we just zip through life. We don't even understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, or how we're doing it. We just do shit and move on to the next thing. And so yeah. taking those opportunities to where we can slowly move through life and understand the, what we're talking about, what we're doing, what we're the person we're, we're sharing space with, whatever it is. I think those the opportunities for the moments of, of specialness and those uh, the beauty is 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 more uh, more available to us. Yeah, totally. And in the you know the awareness the awareness that opens up and the slowness and the bigger picture that you get to see and so you know they talk about like the 80 20 mm. it's like when you're slow and connected it's like you know what what is going to work right now and what not to do or like right you know that it's not time to do this right now rather than like i'm going to try to do this today i'm just going to spin my wheels all day for no reason and it still didn't get done <laughs> And so it's really this place of like, nothing needs to get done. <laughs> like, like nothing needs to get done. That's, that's, uh, I, it, that, that's a, that's a truth for all of us right now. Nothing needs to get done and cool. What, what do I, what do I know to do from there? Right. You know, because that, that, that need to get done or that, like, I have to like, that's not where beautiful art comes from. That's not where the most incredible music comes from. That's like, it comes from like presence and inspiration. And when we were, when we were just like available for, for the newness or for the thing that didn't exist before to come through us. And so again, like, yeah, nothing needs to get done. Cool. What am I, what am I going to do from there? Yeah. I, I've been unraveling that with myself in the, in the past couple of years. Um, 
I didn't realize how, how that, how much that was an issue for me, you know, like how much my, my, my productivity was, uh, was like the qualifier for me. Like if I get, I would have like a list of 30 things to do and I got all, but maybe two of those things done. And by the end of the day, I'd be like, well, I didn't do shit today. This is bullshit. I got nothing yeah. done. I'm, I'm a piece of crap, but yeah. it's like, but celebrate all the shit that you did, not the stuff you didn't do. Yeah, whereas yeah. the the presence through that productivity, I think Alan Watts talks about that. You know, don't don't judge yourself about how much shit you get done, but how present were you through the productivity that you accomplished? Like yeah. if my 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 daughter's light is out in her room, right? I could just go in there and throw a bulb in real quick and then zoom off to the next thing, or I could take some time and like each time I screw in that light bulb, I think about the books she's going to read, the homework that she gets to get done, you know, the, the the friends she gets to talk to on her phone, you know, blah blah blah, the the life that she lives because she has light, and it's like, oh, that's Awesome. Cool. I'm so happy I can, I can change that light for my child. She can look, she can do all the things that she can do. And then I get to go on to the next task. But it's like you embrace and you love the moment that you're in instead of like you do a bunch of shit throughout the day and then you sit down exhausted at the end of the day. You have no idea what you've accomplished, just that you have to get up and do it all again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love to remind everybody that uh, that we are all going to die with an unfinished to-do list. <laughs> I love that. And so, because our because our mind turns it into that it's a problem that I have that that my to do list isn't finished. It's like that thing is always it, like it's it's always going to be more than than you can do today. And cool, it's not a problem. Yeah, I, I, I have this list. I have this list over here of stuff that I need to do, and uh, it'll maybe get done or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. Take the pressure off ourselves, man. It'll all yeah, get absolutely. done when it needs to. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. What do you actually, before we, before we end here, what do you do for your, your healing downtime? Like, do you have a practitioner that you go see? Do, is there like a modality that you like to work with outside of like, obviously breath work and meditation? Like, how do you, how do you find that reset for yourself? Cause you hustle, you're out there, you're doing stuff, you're holding big group sessions, little group sessions. Like there's a lot of contact that you have that I imagine that when you finally do get a chance to unwind and like, you know, get your own personal healing. There's probably a ritual that you have. So what would that like kind of maybe walk us through that a little bit? Yeah. I, you know, and, and I actually have to, uh, that has to be a part of, uh, you know, just my travel schedule when I am going hard, it's like, there is, there is points where like I have to, to schedule in just the, the quiet time and the downtime. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of times when I am on, you know, a, a lot of my trips, I do like, you know, on a, there'd be like on a, a road trip, like on a tour. And so like, I love my, I love my truck time, just mm -hmm. like me alone, driving, getting downloads, breathing, having just, just watching, you know, having, having new insights and awarenesses. Um, so, so that's a big piece, but, but yeah, making sure that I get some my quiet time, um, I, I get recharged. Like I, I, I need to be alone sometimes just for that. That seems to be like, this is this, this vitamin that, that I need my, my vitamin alone time. Mm -hmm. Um, just to, just to, just to breathe and feel and be with myself. And so, um, I, I, f I feel like this year, like I haven't been working as much with, um, uh, I haven't been necessarily getting as much sessions like body work and stuff like that, but that feels like that's, that's some stuff I want to bring back in mm -hmm. and um, yeah, just playing. I mean, I was, I was uh, trying to come to, to one of your sound events. Cause I was like really one to, it's really good to be the one on the floor just laying down and receiving. So <sighs> yeah, it, it uh, <laughs> feels good, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm sure I'll get some of that in my, my, my partner is a phenomenal healer. So that's always like, she's always there to do, any tune up or, mm -hmm. or, or anything that I need. Uh, I just had a really profound experience last weekend during, during my retreat, just some, some big energy that got a little stuck in my body that she was able to, to help open up and move through. So hmm. beautiful. Well, I'm glad yeah. to know that you're taking care of yourself, man. Cause I know how, uh, <clears throat> how hard that can be sometimes, especially when you're, when you're holding space for a lot of people. And sometimes we can kind of shortchange our own healing. It's like, Oh, I'm, I'm healing through the holding space. Well, yes, we, yes, but also, yeah, we need to make sure that we remove ourselves and whatever that modality is, take that time to, to get yourself straight. Yeah. And I, and I know that I'm, um, I have this, 
I have this kind of idea or mantra too, just this question that, that I bring up in my life. It's like, how, how do I get even better at taking care of myself every single day? Mm. And so, um, you know, I, I definitely, I definitely still have room for improvement, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to ask the question because you never, so, you know, never get the answer if you don't ask questions. And that's a hard one to ask too. That's a hard one yeah. to ask. How, how do I just get a little bit better every single day? And then, you know, that's it, over, over time we would look at like, wow, how, just what a, what a huge shift that is, uh, over time. Um, and, and I think that's, I think that's a beautiful thing for anything, whatever it is that we're working for, instead of trying to go from point A to point B mm. today. Yeah. How do I do a little bit more every day? How do yeah. I get a little bit better? How do I, how do I get like, you know, one or two more conscious breaths each day, right? How do I spend an extra minute maybe meditating or being with my body or, feeling what I'm feeling. And it's like, we do that over a period of time. And then it's like really, really profound changes when you look at the, you know, over a year or two or 10. So, yeah, just, you know, just, just edging it forward, just a little bit yeah. forward every day. Yeah. Love that. Well, where's yeah. the, where's the rest of the year taking you before you get your break? Yeah. So I'll be, uh, let's see, be in New Mexico and Colorado, Las Vegas and Phoenix, and then a break. And then, uh, starting to work on the, uh, 2024 schedule. So, all right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see where that brings me. It feels like you know, there's 2024 feels cool. Like there's stuff that I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Like yeah. I don't even, I have, I have no idea what's in store. So oh, I love that. The mystery, yeah. you know, but the excitement of the mystery, not the, not the, the trepidation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I can feel the big change and uh, we'll see what that is. Hell yeah. You know? Oh, well, I can't I wait mean, to see was... what that happens. I mean, you know, in 2019, towards the end of the year, it's like, man, I feel like we're on the edge of like something huge. And that turned, turned out to be COVID. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see what 2024 has for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, man, thank you so much for being here, brother. I, uh, yeah. again, man, I, I can't wait to meet you in person and, uh, and hopefully we can, uh, I can attend one of your events. I can get you to one of mine. We can just trade off our healing and just, you know, just embrace, you know, I, I can't wait sounds, to experience that. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. I can't wait to, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you for all that you do, brother. Appreciate everything, man. We'll talk soon. Zach Rader is an international teacher, speaker, and healer, and travels the country holding breath work and meditation workshops. I was lucky enough to have Zach on the show about a year ago, where we talked about intuition, and so today we have him back on. We're going to take a deep dive into meditation and breath work, and how these individually help us, but how beautifully co the combination of the two help us. We also talk about spiritual bypassing and how sometimes we can uh, utilize our peaceful practices to almost find another addiction and start to hide from the things in the world that we really need to face, either about ourselves or about situations. Uh, we also talk about the importance of having um, the proper guide, uh, not that the teacher is the person doing the healing for you. Uh, you are your own healer, and we have a really good discussion about that but how that teacher, the right teacher, can help understand when you need a little more pressure added or when you've had too much and you need some taken away. Uh, Zach is a beautiful human being. He has found a lot of personal peace through the healing modalities that he practices. And for me, the best people that can hold that space have worked in that space in a very intimate level. I'm really excited to talk with Zach. Hope you get something out of the conversation. We'll see you on the other side. 